Alrighty, if you're looking to up your game when it comes to edge banding um, from, say, using an iron and, and uh, iron on, on edge banding, but you don't have either the funds or, like me, the space, or you simply don't do enough cabinetry to warrant spending twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 on a proper edge banding machine. Um, then these uh, hot air type of uh, um, edge banders might just work perfectly for you. What I have found is that there are a few little things that you need to do to make them work a little better and keep things tracking nicely. There's a lot of adjustment at the back here to get uh, things lined up when it comes to the, uh, the banding where it comes off uh, the roll here and through to line up uh, with the piece that you're, you're actually putting the edge banding to. I've also added a piece of uh, timber here that I can move up and down according to whatever thickness material I'm putting through. Um, and that just helps keep the board down because if you move it up and down, then obviously it, uh, it wrecks the job of the, the uh, edge banding. And another thing that I've uh, done, and this is really hokey, but it seems to work, and that is just to put a, a gallon or a four liter tin of, of something on top of, uh, of the edge banding itself. And what this does, rather than this just being super loose, um, is it gives it a little bit of tension. So uh, it's a little bit um, tricky at first. You need to make sure that you get the edge banding past the edge of the material that you're applying it to and really f ha you know, use a lot of pressure. And, and I actually help feed the edge banding in at first because without doing that with the... Uh, with the weight of that um, four liter um, tin on top, uh, you can actually just push the material past the end of the piece of edge banding and it won't work. But what it does do by, by having that and giving it that resistance is it keeps a nice straight uh, um, line on the edge banding and where these guides, uh, where it runs through the guides, it doesn't really touch, uh, or the glued surface doesn't touch the edge of the, of the guides, and therefore it goes on with all the glue that it's supposed to, and, and you get a good job of it sticking. So anyway, I'm going to turn this on, and let's just uh, run a piece through, and we'll check out how it goes. So I'm offering it up right to the end. And I'm going to try, just make sure this comes up to temperature, but I'm going to try to maintain a really nice even speed. And you can see there's quite a bit of pressure to, to feed the, the um, edge banding. And I use my body here just to, and like I said, my, my finger here, or fingers to help feed the edge banding at first until you get it going and then of course you can see here the uh, edge banding just passed so it's definitely a slow procedure uh, compared to a fully automated uh, edge bander but it does the job And you can see there, let's just see there that edge banding is really nicely applied. It's not coming off. It's, uh, yeah, quite a good job. Anyway, that's just, uh, that's just um, what I do to, to uh, try and make the job and it is a tedious task. 
of edge bending with this sort of setup. Just make it a little bit easier, make it go a little bit easier. So anyway, if you like this video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next one.